Bipolar mood disorder is one of the mood disorders. The other one that is well known is depressive disorder or unipolar depression. Uh, but people with bipolar mood disorder have episodes when their mood is down and episodes when their mood is up, when they are high, when they have too much energy and are on top of the world. In bipolar mood disorder, these episodes alternate, but there are also episodes when people are normal, when their mood is as it should be, and very often they know the difference. So unlike other disorders where mood could go up or it may look like uh, mania or being high, such as in ADHD, in bipolar mood disorder, people know that this is actually unusual and there's something not quite right. When we think about the symptoms of people when they are manic, as you would expect, they are the opposite of what people experience when they are down or depressed. So now we see someone who's got far too much energy, too much initiative and can't stop. They will be feeling euphoric, on top of the world and able to do anything. The amount of energy they have is difficult to contain, so they wind up not sleeping very well and constantly being on the go to the point where they wear themselves out as well as those around them. You do wind up seeing symptoms such as loosening of association, where someone is talking to you and going from one topic to the next for no reason whatsoever. Sometimes people have pressure of speech, which means they simply can't stop talking even if they want to. And in general terms, they just go on to the point where they really exhaust themselves completely. Establishing a diagnosis of bipolar mood disorder can only be done in one way, and that is by the clinician talking to the patient, hearing their story and asking questions. There are no blood tests or scans that help in making a diagnosis, and although there are some abnormalities that could be seen on certain scans when someone is high or low in mood, they are not significant and not deterministic enough to be able to make a diagnosis with them. So they simply show an abnormality, but it's not clear enough by itself what that abnormality is being caused by. So there's no alternative but for the clinician to ask the patient questions and listen to what's been going on. And whilst they ask those questions, in their mind, they're going through a list of alternative diagnoses and bit by bit are making sure that none of those are actually the case. So when you're being asked a question, it's very often to make sure that we know what you're experiencing, to clarify something that is not quite clear, and to make sure that what you are reporting is not actually part of another illness. When you've been diagnosed with bipolar mood disorder, the next question of course is going to be, what are we going to do about it? There are various strategies and treatments available. The first of all is psychotherapies of some description. With psychotherapies, people learn how better to manage their symptoms, but the problem with psychotherapies in itself is that they can't address the biological abnormality that underpins the bipolar mood disorder itself. So they are limited in their success and usually have to be complemented with medication. The sort of medication we use is not antidepressants, if we can help it, because antidepressants have a tendency to make things worse. People will experience more frequent episodes and sometimes they become manic, so we try to stay away from them. Instead of which, we use mood stabilizers and they are very often originally medications being used in treating epilepsy. When you are started on mood stabilizing medication, they're often anti-epileptic medications and they have the effect of getting rid of unwanted brain activity. Underlying the problem of bipolar mood disorder seems to be a tendency in that brain to have a chaotic influence in mood regulation systems. And the anti-epileptic medication seems to get rid of that unwanted brain activity with a direct result that the mood stabilizes. The issue with that is that no one can really predict it. So usually we recommend to stay on it as long as you feel that it is working for you. If you then think, I'd like to try without, then slowly withdraw yourself of the medication, but never before six months after it was started. If you then notice that you start to have problems again, you put yourself back on the medication as soon as you can. 
If you try that twice, for instance, after six months and after two years of being on the medication, and on both those occasions you start to fall ill again, then it is a clear message that it is better to stay on it for as long as you can. And in that situation, the only real reason to come off the medication is if it starts to cause problems in its own right. In those situations, if you do stop the medication, there is simply a high risk of you falling ill again, and it is a risk worth avoiding.